Well, back, welcome back, everyone, to our very special edition of the Casual Friday birthday stream. And we couldn't think of a better occasion to have our very first Smite 2 Dev Insight show. We're getting even closer to Alpha every, every day. Uh, so I just figured, why not bring some people from the team over to talk about what's going on with Smite 2, their experience working with the game. Maybe have a little bit of spoilers coming your way, too. So I've got with me Pon Pon. Oh, but then wow. I've also got Shane and Kitten of Doom, as the community may very well know. How are y'all doing today? Good. Doing really good. Fun. Yeah, things are going well. Awesome, awesome. Well, before we kick things off, uh, for everyone that doesn't know who you are, I guess we can just kind of go down the line. What's your position? What are you working on on Smite 2 and all that good stuff? Um, so I'm Michaela, uh, Kitten of Doom, and I'm a quality assurance analyst. So a lot of the time we're playtesting every day, you know, finding bugs, fixing them for the next build. So I do a lot of playtesting and a lot of testing, you know, and bug reporting to a lot of different departments. Um, and we mainly just want to make sure everything feels good and very playable and all of that fun stuff. But yeah, it's been a blast so far. And I started out, of course, on Smite 1, moved over to Smite 2 in September, um, and it's already come so far since then. So it's, insane. it's been a blast. Uh, I'm Shane. I'm an effects artist on Smite 2. I'm the effects artist that made Hecate and a few other gods on Smite 1. I've been with Hi-Rez about uh, three years, just working on abilities, skins like that, and having a lot of fun being on Smite 2 so far. Cool. And my name is Pompon. I'm a game designer on Smite 2. Uh, I joined the Smite 2 team basically when it first started, and I generally work on anything from god design to balance to ability implementation, uh, feature design. It's been kind of all over the place, especially since I've been on Smite 2 as we build up the whole game from basically scratch. It's insane. You all have been doing so much work, and I just can't wait for the community to get their hands yeah. on it. Hopefully soon. We'll hopefully have some more info that's down the line here. But Hecate coming to Smite, Smite 2's very first all-new god coming to Smite. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to talk to you all about uh, especially from Pond from the design team, Shane from FX, you from QA, Michaela. What's it like? What's the process like bringing our very first all new goddess to Smite 2? What does that look like on your end? Um, I'll have Pond go first because yeah. a lot of it starts on design. Design first. does kick yep. things off, yeah. Yeah, so we knew that we wanted to bring a new character to the game relatively soon because we wanted to make sure that there was something interesting there that was new that people hadn't experienced before, so they had something new to really grasp onto when they played Smite 2. Um, and so we were kind of looking at what we what characters we could be doing, um, and Hecate was one that really stood out as one that... Um, the community has wanted for a really, really long time. Um, has a lot of really cool different ways that we could do magic, a lot of cool different things that we could explore. And we knew that there were a few things about Hecate's design that we could uh, leverage in Smite 2's new tech and we could start to look at. So things like her cloth simulation were a really big thing. Absolutely beautiful, by the way. Animation yeah. team is UE5, just so sick. We knew that also we had a whole bunch of VFX to really like make the magic feel pop out. Um, there's a lot of just interesting things that we wanted to do, and it also forced us to build out a few new pieces of tech. Like uh, her ultimate, as you've seen there, has that kind of like panning movement. We need to build that out from scratch. So she just had a lot of things that were really good for us to be building out, a lot of good things for us to explore, and a really big community requested figure. So she seemed like the perfect fit. Absolutely. What about you, Shane? Starting from the ground up on Hecate was, uh, it was really fun. So on effects side, what happens is design comes to us with the, the kit pitch and like what we're going to do. And then effects is going to start to block out like three very simple beams for her alt. Um, and I, I think things were a little bit different at the start of the kit. Um, but what was really fun was starting to dive into what we can do in Unreal 5. Cause I hadn't worked in, I'd only ever worked in Unreal 3 as an effects artist. So. I was able to figure out and learn some really cool stuff like on our AO1 that's using a, a stencil with custom depth. So you can see into the ground, there's a hole that I put a bunch of effects into and you can only see through this little window what's going on down there and that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like on her AO3, you're taken to this magical world where we're using uh, a post process to apply all that stuff to the ground. It's just something we could have never done in Smite 2 or Smite 1 um, that we're able to do now. And uh, yeah, getting to kind of flesh out all the arts and magical feeling of uh, Smite 2's first god. It was a lot of pressure, but uh, I'm glad she turned out the way she did. Yeah, he did a really good job on it. It's cooked. Kinda, it's kind of funny because we're going down the the pipeline of like 
the process of how it goes, but you know, design touches it, then effects, and then the god's actually play testable. Um, and we get the god in play tests every day, and then after that, you know, throughout the play tests, we're just jotting down notes of all of like the bugs and issues going on. So um, she's been in play tests for quite a while now, and basically um, that's like the job of QA. Like if there's any um, UI bugs, design bugs effects bugs, just anything functionally that's wrong, we just type up that and then we send that off to design, UI, whoever, um, to get all of that fixed. Um, and yeah, it's just been a blast playing as her and just seeing how she improves after each play test has been really fun. Um, Cause right when the God first is play testable, they're a little bit, you know, rough around the edges, but each day, you know, she just keeps getting better and better. Her animations look even more amazing. Um, and like the effects, they keep being iterated on. Um, so yeah, just seeing the first and working with the first God on Smite 2 has been really fun. And I, th I think she turned out really well. Yeah, it's awesome. You touched on it. Just seeing the progress from playtest to playtest. The team has been putting in so much work yeah. and it's been so incredible to just see the progress, even day to day. Yeah. Just how quickly things are moving. It's just been absolutely incredible to see. And mm -hmm. I just can't wait. I know we've been doing the friends and family playtests and we've had some ambassadors and streamers and stuff have their uh, had a chance to get their hands on Hikati as well and getting all that feedback and then bringing that back to the team. Yep. It's just an iterative process. AJ said in the video, we do those tests every Friday, but you know, we get a lot of good feedback, but then there's also a really long to-do list on, okay, oh, yeah. what, how, what can we do to, you know, keep on pushing, keep on making the game feel the best it can be. Yeah, one of the, the most fun things has been like every every month or so, every two months, uh, someone will post a, hey, let's look at the play test from two months ago. Yeah. Cause we've, every single day we record our play test, we upload it to folder. So we have a huge library of our play test footage. And every time they post that, it's like, wow, I can't believe the game was in that state two months ago. Now it's in so much a better state. And it kind of reminds you that, yeah, two months from now it's going to be even that much better so just huge list of things to be going yeah. through but yeah. we're turning through them oh yeah for sure. i've uh, gone back and like verified some bugs that have been from a while ago and just seeing when i first came on um conquest it was all just blocks yeah you know because environment art wasn't in yet um and like all of the uh, hud elements were temp as well um so seeing how far we've come just from you know september even is pretty wild so it's for awesome. sure well, Hecate, very first all new god coming to Smite 2. Curious to hear everyone's thoughts. What What's your favorite part about Hecate? Yeah, you guys wanna go? Or... Um, I think her ult for me is my favorite just because how like fluid she is in between each beam. Like you can just catch out someone who's like one HP or even you just start out the fight with it because it does so much damage. Um, but yeah, I would just say the ult feels really fun to just catch people with and really like rewarding as well. Like on each hit that you get, it feels even better on each one of those. So Yeah, for me, it's uh, for sure the ult as well. In playtests, I love to uh, just in the mid 1v1, as soon as if it's Hecate on Hecate, it's just whoever gets their ult hits level five first. Uh, and then I just build a bunch of cooldowns, spam her ult as much as I can. And I have a lot of fun playing her that way. Nice. Yeah, my uh, my favorite part of her is the AO2, um, the second ability, because that was one that I got to actually work on a little bit. Cause, nice. Because um, we get to the blueprint so much more stuff. So that ability being deployable, that can actually listen for other characters firing off stuff and getting more and more powerful as that goes on and trying to get some of the things to like turn on VFX and turn off VFX. And I've been working with Shane to try and like get some of that to actually <laughs> work because that likes to break a lot. Um, but that's been, that was like a very interesting challenge. Uh, and it, it just kind of goes to show like how much more control we have to be able to make some cool stuff, utilizing the, the tools that programming provided us and ga the gas system has provided us in UE5. Yeah, for sure. And for that ability too, uh, we released the deep dive video, but actually yesterday, our friends over at IGN released the video first mm -hmm. as an exclusive, but they also had an article. So if you haven't read that article on IGN, it does have a little bit more details on Hikati and her abilities, but that ability too is just so interesting to me. Uh, IGN detailed in the article, so we can talk a little bit about it. You do a deployable yeah. and then there's an area that spawns and then the deployable powers up for every ability that's fired within that area. Yep. And then you can refire it, 
to get an extra burst of damage. It's super cool. We haven't done that anything like that before. Yeah, and she can she can charge it up herself. So she can she can be responsible for charging up. She can have her team charge it up and it also persists for a very, 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 very long time. So you can charge it up somewhere completely different and lob it across the map. Oh, that's sick. I didn't uh, realize. That's really far. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and so like you can have like this big new kind of come out of nowhere and just, if you've built it up and you successfully play that little loop, you get to have like this really powerful nuke in it. It scales really high. That's awesome. Yeah. It's strong. Wait. Oh, that's gonna be sick. Well, Hikati first new god coming to Smite 2, but Smite 2's also got a lot of new items, and I definitely wanted to pick you all's brain on the item system that's coming to Smite 2 because it's completely overhauled. We've talked a lot about it in the deep dive videos, talking about, you know, the way items are built, new stats like strength and intelligence. So, Pond, I guess I'll defer to you first. Talk to me a little bit about the experience, you know, building items in Smite 2 versus Smite 1. Yeah, so, the, I mean, the biggest difference, obviously, is going to be the active system. So, in Smite 1, all your items are passive, they give you different effects, and you have relics as kind of your active of choices but now it's going to be that all six of your item slots could be active if you so choose which means you could pick up things like jade scepter which pushes people away or you could pick up anything to help your team or fill out gaps that you're missing and that level of flexibility means that you have more control over playing that really supporty style with these active effects or you can go the more traditional smite path really either way works and, and feels really good but that level of flexibility, like I know when I play support characters, I like to try and empower my team. Mm -hmm. But if I have to build Blink to engage and I have to build Aegis to maybe survive because they have like a Poseidon, they're gonna drop a crack on me and I, I can't take that much damage, I need to immune some. Um, I'll be limited in, in being able to not get girl, right? I can't empower my team that way. But now I can pick up all those potential effects, right? For sure. Which is really, really cool. It definitely op opens up just a lot more, you know, diversity in your builds. Yep. Skill ceiling is so much higher for skill expression and stuff like that. Yeah, I just can't wait. Uh, Kitten of Doom, I wanted to talk to you just because you came from the community. You played so much Smite before you started, you know, here at High Res. What was it like for you hopping in from the QA perspective, you know, helping the team kind of, you know, uh, refine this entirely new uh, item system? Um, it's been a lot because I know um, Caps and I have been, you know, just working uh, all throughout the day because we have to just make sure like the items are costing what they should or like doing what they should a lot of the time like sometimes an item can just stop working entirely and then we gotta figure out why that happened but it's been really fun and I mostly play on controller as well so mm -hmm. it's been a little bit challenging getting used to like actually doing like the active items and stuff like that but I think it's been pretty nice to like what Pawn was saying is like you can actually have a blink and then you can have like a different relic to like empower your team as well so you're not super uh bogged down with uh your build and everything but um it's been really fun i mean uh we're still going through a lot of the items you know a lot of iteration from design on like what we're wanting to buff and nerf just from playtest to playtest um, but uh, I would say a lot with the new engine and gas debug system, it's been helping us a lot with how we test as well, because there's a lot of new tools. Um, from Smite 1, we basically just had like the combat uh, chat, you know, to like see the damage and mitigation and everything. But now we have a lot more tools at our disposal to like help us debug things and seeing if like things are activating and everything like that. So it's been like night and day as well for QA. So we're hoping the community also notices all of the quality that we've Absolutely. put into that as well, so. Awesome, well, you all ready to have some fun? Yeah. This is uh, the Ooh. segment that I've been looking forward to. So we chatted a little bit offline chat. We wanted to get some sort of kind of spoiler or teaser for you for Smite 2. And we've been talking about items and the active item system is something completely new coming to Smite 2. So. I wanted to ask everyone, you know, what's their favorite new active item that's coming to Smite 2? And I think mine is actually coming up first. Ooh. And it's actually twofold because the items do yep. something pretty similar. I've got Avatar's Parashu and Dreamer's Idol. And what, what these do are they're kind of active items that give you that burst of either a 20% increase in strength or an increase in intelligence. And basically the way I've been using them is, you know, I need just that extra burst of power, either to clear a wave or team fighting. And my favorite part about these items is you'll see in a second is the, the visual effect that happens whenever we pop them. So we'll wait for 
the video to play here. Oh boy. You just get big. Yeah, big. <laughs> it's so here. good. <laughs> There's actually a fun um, item called like Death's Metal as well that has like crit on it. And uh, if you just put all of those at once, you're like critting and you're big and you uh, just swing at people. It's hilarious. It's just hilarious <laughs> seeing just a big Ymir just running at you and you know from the visual oh he's got some bonus strength or some bonus intelligence i better not get hit especially if he's building the face punch build yeah it's super cool and, and this is one that like when we first implemented it actually broke where if you stack them both or you combine them a certain way uh that uh size increase would stay oh my yeah. gosh that's uh, awesome you just, <laughs> so you were just, you were just staying big uh we had to fix that unfortunately but <laughs> it's really cool now that, that it's working and it, it's actually a pretty robust system now that's mm -hmm. awesome all right uh Pawn, I've got your item up next. You want to talk a little bit about the item you chose? Yeah, uh, I believe I chose Restorative Amanita, or as everyone calls, the Healing Shroom. Uh, nice. <laughs> I, I chose it more because it's sentimental. This was the first active item we made. Oh, awesome. Um, as well as it was at a time where it was a very, very, very small team. And so I had to just go searching for a thing that I felt would look like a healing thing. And we were on the old Smite One Conquest that we'd imported at the time. So I just went around looking at all the different environment <laughs> assets and I found like this tiny little shroom asset that oh someone my made. Gosh. And I just made it literally, I had to make it- <laughs> This'll do. <laughs> it was like 30X the size. And I had to like go find meditations effects and make it pulse. But basically what it is, is you place a healing shroom on the ground, a restorative amanita, and it pulses a healing effect onto your team. So this is a way of buying essentially meditation for your team uh, and, and utilizing this in a, a different space to uh, control the fight. So if you're pushing into a Phoenix and you need a little bit more uh, healing, you pop this down on the ground and suddenly your team is going to be able to get a whole burst of healing and stay healthy so they can continue to fight. And it's you can see a little shroom. shroom. <laughs> yep, that's, the, that's the asset that I had to copy over. It's still in there. It will eventually get replaced. Someone who is actually an artist will come in. <laughs> and make it look pretty. Yep. But for now, it is still the debug shroom, and I, I love the debug. That's awesome. And yeah, I want to call out, all these videos are taken on our practice map. This is, you know, work in progress on all sorts of different assets that you're seeing here. But we wanted to take the time and give you all an early look at what the team's been cooking up. And the, the other thing I like about this item is you start calling out the effects. And so like in the middle of play test, people will be like, shroom, drop the shroom, drop the shroom. <laughs> and like, it's a little like, no, I dropped the shroom. Don't run away from this. Get the healing. And all like, the comms must be uh, amazing. It's so good. Yeah. It's really fun to see all these different active effects and how it changes the teamfight dynamic and how, uh, how as people have them or you react to them, uh, people are calling them out. It's just a lot of fun. That's awesome. All right. Shane, you're up next. Oh, yeah. Scepter of Dominion. <laughs> Why did you choose this one, Shane? So this item is, it's hands down the strongest and highest skill ceiling active item that we've got in the game right now, I think. What this does is it places a stasis field um, uh, a pretty big circle that after two seconds, anyone caught in that circle is going to be uh, old Agus. So they can't be damaged and they're stuck in place. Um, and you can use this to pull off really insane plays. You're rushing for the Titan. The enemy team is just respawning. You throw down the scepter. They're not going anywhere. You win the game. But my favorite way to use it is uh, to kill my teammates. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yep. I've been a victim of that before. Aggro was running away from the enemy team on really low health, and they were close to getting him. And I was able to put the scepter perfectly in front of him. He got frozen. Enemy team killed him. That was, that was my right there. It seems like that's something that aggro deserves, though, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. It uh, is important to know if you go inside, you are also stunned. So be, be, uh, place it carefully. Yep, it's allies or enemies. There's So you can friendly fire with this. Um, and there's some really cool applications of that. If you don't want to just kill your teammate, one one strategy I know that was done was you buy it and you like if you know the team is diving you, you buy it and when they dive you, you drop it on yourself, giving essentially your team a whole chance to surround them. Oh extra. wow, nice! Yeah, which is a whole different application. We've had di interesting fights around the Titan where like I believe I, I don't remember if it actually works this way or not still, but there was a playtest where it affected the Titan. Oh my god! And you gosh. stalled out the Titan from dying long enough for someone to come back. And the hero off. play. That's it awesome. was the hero play. So lots of really, really interesting things that you could do with this type of effect. Yeah. Definitely a very spicy active. Yeah. It, Kill someone's buff, you know, just drop Right, it you know? <laughs> I can't wait to see what the community cooks up with this. The, I can already see the, the clips. Like, it's just going to be great seeing, seeing what the community does with this active item because it's super powerful. Yeah. Uh, and works on allies and enemies, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, getting to do last up, 
Jade Scepter. I see. Uh, Jade Scepter is really fun because you can actually activate it, and there's a area of effect in front of you where you knock up uh, a bunch of enemy gods, and it can be like multiple at a time as well. Um, and it's really fun um, to play on Neath as well because you can just set up for your root and do mm. a ton of abilities. You can actually use this as well to get like a jungler off of you as well, or to just help set up your team as well. Um, but yeah, I think we'll have the video showing it in a second, but it's a really fun area of effect right here, as you can see the targeter in a second. And beautiful me. Oh wow, that yep. is a large area. A big area, you can just knock up a bunch of people. So it's been um, fun in play tests as well. <laughs> yeah. But I've been liking it, you know, just in case if I need some extra peel for myself or to just like I said, set up uh, with Neath Root or whoever you are. But yeah, it can be pretty powerful. Yeah, I saw a lot of cool stuff. I forget, uh, at SWC, I forget who is playing, but uh, I saw somebody pick up this item with Anubis and Ooh. just really help them out with a lot of the self peel, peel then was able to life steal back, just really set up for mm -hmm. themselves, which is And really get cool. like a good wrap off on whoever you yep. got knocked up. Yeah, and I think this actually, I, I think I actually buffed this, the knockback range is further now. Oh, wow. Um, Ooh. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> and uh, one of the cool things you can do that too is like uh, Kokokan. Uh, tornado. Oh you yeah. Can push them back in. Oh, that's awesome. So you deploy your tornado. They try to run away. You just knock them back in. Yeah. Oh, that's the play right here. You're getting the strats early, yeah. everybody. There's a lot of. Yeah. Again, there's a lot of cool things you can do, and, and because they're available to anyone, it doesn't matter if you necessarily benefit from int or not. If you think you can make really good use of this effect, especially if you're like a support player and you really think this is going to be good for you, there's there's no reason you can't yeah. buy it. Try it out and see what happens. Yeah, it's gonna be super awesome. Well, that's it for our little spoiler teaser segment. Hope everyone in chat enjoyed that. But I got the crew with me for a little bit, so definitely want to just hear more insight about what's your favorite part about working on Smite too. You know, uh, remaking the game from the ground up in Unreal Engine Five. We've heard a lot about the improvements that come with the new tech that we're working on. So curious to see, you know, what's your everyone's favorite part about the new workflow? Um, I, I mean, aside from being able to actually do more stuff and prototype things more directly with this help of blueprints. There's just a lot more power that designers have to be able to absolutely break the game. Uh, I know we did something the other day I can't talk about, okay. <laughs> uh, but the second I said the sentence, the programmers looked at me horrified. Um, so the, the level of the level of power we have is actually probably too much for what we should should be allowed to do, but it's that's been really fun. The, I mean, the only other thing is really Smite 1 is such a impressive game that's been developed over so long. The amount of things that we've had to do just to get even remotely close to that level of clear polish of the game, the fluid combat, yeah. there's a lot of things might want to have done that we've had to replicate or try and improve. And that has been a constant iterative effort as we have to build this from the ground up. Things like actually making sure that the server and the client, uh, they, if you, the space off the server tick rate, you have to subtract the amount of post fire between abilities. Otherwise you'll get this like extra frame of delay that happens over the course of the whole game. Just uh, there's millions of tiny things that we've had to do to make Smite 2 feel really, really good. And it's just, it, I'm always impressed that like, oh yeah, Matt, Smite 1 really does feel good at its core because yeah, it's yeah. built on such a strong foundation well, and we have to make that again. The attention to detail is crazy. I, I see people, I know it happens for a fact, play test reviews because be, everyone records their play tests. People will go through their entire game frame by frame. I, I do that actually every day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's insane. Well, Shane, what about you? What's your favorite part about working on Smite 2? So I know, I know we talk about the jump to Unreal 5 a lot, but for the effects side with the tools we've been given, it's really, it's like we were finger painting before and someone came up and gave us a bunch of paint brushes. Um, and so we've got the we've got the artistic fundamentals, but we're learning so much every day with uh, different tools and stuff. We're we're making new tools. We're making new uh, rules for everything. We want to redesign uh, Smite One's effects fundamentally. And so just being given that opportunity that we've always wanted to do, um, but we just didn't have time like on Smite One to go back and remake the old gods. We can now do that, which is it's a lot. It's fun. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also say like for QA, obviously the tools have been really nice because we can uh, actually just request things that are would be like a quality of life thing. Like if we want bots to fire abilities in certain ways, 
if we're wanting to be, you know, we can just request all these different like GM commands that'll help us with testing. That's been huge. Um, I think my favorite thing is just seeing the improvements day by day, like I said before, and just all the things we can actually do to like add on to how cool Smite is, like what we did with Ymir, how we can make his wall like knock up now. And you're just adding all these different quality of lives to all the gods to make them feel even better than they were before. Um, yeah, just seeing the design team and all the teams come together to think of like, how can we make this better, uh, make this feel more like alive and fun to use. That's been really fun. Just seeing the different gods that we keep implementing um, in and how we can just make them even better than before has been really fun. That's so sick. Well, I'm super impressed with all the work that you all do on it a daily basis. I'm super impressed with the rest of the Titan Forge team that's working on Smite 2, absolutely cooking mm -hmm. every single day. But as we inch closer to our closed alpha weekend, mm -hmm. the first ones that's coming up, I wanted to pull you all. What are any early tips or just advice for people whenever they do get a chance to hop into Smite 2? What should they? What are some early tips and tricks or some advice for those players? Um, I think the biggest one will probably be actually Take a, take a moment or two to go into practice mode. Mm -hmm. So we actually will have that available where you can actually go in and play and, and in like this kind of practice, it's not quite- It'll be in that same uh, little practice mode like uh, that we yeah. did the item previews. Okay. But that'll, it'll let you see all the items. It'll let you actually look at the God changes that we have done and it'll let you get, get a chance to like really feel out all that stuff. And I think it's worth just familiarizing yourself with a little yeah. bit because when you get into a game, it's hard to like look at all the things in that moment, in that a period right before the game starts to try to figure out what you want to do. So just familiarize yourself so that when you do start playing, you do start seeing things, you have a little bit more context behind it. It'll just help speed up the process of yeah. getting into it. But once you're like two games in, I think you'll you'll be right at home. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Shane, Kitten of Doom, any advice, any tips? Uh, something that I struggled with when I was first starting to play Test My 2 and something that I think is very important is just use your actives. Uh, don't forget about them in the middle of a fight. It's if very easy initially to forget about them. Yeah, so. it's, it's life or death. If you've got the an active that gives you a shield and you don't use it and you look down and you're dead and it's like, wow, <laughs> what did I spend that gold on, man? <laughs> Worst stats. Yep. Um, I would probably say since there's a bunch of new items, uh, we have an auto build system implemented. Um, so especially if you're a little intimidated with learning like what's even good to buy on my god, we have a bunch of different auto buy options for a god when you load into the game. So you can choose to pick an auto buy or a manual build. Um, and I think that'll be one of the biggest tips. And of course, read the tool tips because mm -hmm. uh, there are some abilities that work differently. Mm, in yeah. than we can't one. spoil all those yeah, right now, but say yeah. Which ones, <laughs> but yeah, definitely read yeah. the tool tips on your gods um, and then just pick auto buy if you wanna just to get in there and feel things out. But yeah, that's what happened. That's awesome. And I think my tip is, you know, after you get a couple games in, maybe with the auto buy, um, once you get comfortable kind of building your own items, just don't be afraid to experiment and just try yeah. things out. Like the system is entirely different. Every item is open to every god. You know, there's definitely going to be lots of different combinations and things that you can do to play the god like you want them to play. And uh, as Pawn would say, once you do get your hands on the alpha, we want you to break things. So yes, absolutely. definitely give us all your feedback after you have a chance to you know, play Test Smite 2 for the first time in our upcoming Alpha Weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all that I have for you all. Thanks so much, team, for hanging out. But before we go, it's our birthday. It's our birthday stream. So why not give away another birthday gift? Oh, let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah, we've got codes happening all stream. So if you use code birthday Enigma one in game, you'll get an Enigma chest. These codes are going to last all the way up until Tuesday when they expire. So if you're not at home right now, Definitely whenever you get home over the weekend, redeem that code to get your free Enigma chest. It's gonna be super awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Well, that's it for our, I guess our very first Smite 2 Dev Insight stream, y'all. Thanks so much for joining us. We've got a very special fan art show coming up here in a second. So we'll see you all right on the other side of this break. <laughs> 